Hello everybody and welcome to the 2010 High School Football Show. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me as usual is the coach Chris Wright. Coach, we have a great show tonight uh, today. Why don't you tell us who our coaches are? Well, we're really looking forward to having them come in again. We've got Matt Savato who's here from Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian. Uh, Chris Hine, once again the coach at Sheboygan South and a new coach at Sheboygan North, Ed Thompson, took over after being a long time assistant there and at Kohler. During the breaks, we're going to be showing the home schedules for each of the schools, and then we'll also show our broadcast schedule for the high school uh, portion of our season. We'll also talk a little bit about Lakeland football at the end, and uh, in our last segment, we'll also talk a little bit about the predictions we made last year and what's coming up for this year. Uh, when we come back from a break, I'll be interviewing Matt Zavada, so stay tuned. If you have diabetes, become a Red Strider at the American Diabetes Association Step Out Walk to Fight Diabetes. Sign up today at diabetes.org slash redstrider. Joining me is Matt Zavada from uh, Sheboygan Lutheran, Kohler and Christian. And Matt, you're entering your third year as a head coach uh, how'd the first two years go and uh, what are your impressions of the program? You know, are you moving forward? Yeah, you know, we, the first couple of years, I think we're a time for our team to learn and I brought a whole new system into the school and uh, first year there we had one win, last year we had three. Uh, this year we're really hoping to uh, make playoffs. Uh, that, that's our goal right now. Uh, we, we started a youth program last season, that was a, a a goal of mine to get started. We had uh, right around 60 in the program. This year we have 70 kids signed up, grades five through eight, uh, with all the grade schools. So I think as far as our program moving forward, we're, we're doing that and, and good things are happening with us. Now one of the things you mentioned, of course, the, the youth program is, is gaining in numbers. How about uh, translation into the, uh, the program itself at, at the high school level? How are your numbers there? And uh, breaking down school to school to school, Luther, Christian, and Kohler, how are the numbers there? Yeah, we this year our numbers are looking at about 37, 38 kids, and we're up right around 10 more than we had last year. Uh, this freshman class is the first class I had went through our youth program, so we have a good, healthy freshman class and with kids with some experience at the youth level. Uh, the majority of our kids are still from Lutheran with, with Cole right in the middle and, and this year we have seven kids from Christian which last year we had three or four so we're, we're gaining numbers there too. Now when we were talking before we came on you had mentioned you'd lost one key player from last year and he was from Christian. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, that individual? Yeah, uh, Lee Velkamp, he was our, our tight end and outside linebacker. He, he had some all-conference honors. He uh, led our team receiving and uh, and uh, also our tackles for loss. Real good athlete. Uh, but we have uh, some returning players. We have a lot of returning players. We have nine on, on offense and ten on defense. So there's a lot of experience with our team this year. Talk a little bit about the defense because I know the, the times we saw you last year, it seemed like the offense could generate some, some yardage and you know, move the ball a little bit, but the defense just seemed at times to really struggle. Yeah, and again, we have, we're experienced, so we have 10 returning guys that have, have experience. We have uh, a lot of guys, are, this will be their third year starting. We had a lot of sophomores starting with my first year, and, and they've really excelled and, and become some athletes. I've got Michael Krieger, uh, one of, I believe, the premier defensive tackles in our conference. He's 6'2", 210, runs a 4'8", 40, and he's, he's solid. I got a uh, 250-pound middle linebacker, uh, um, Zach Webster, uh, Connor Duco, another senior, is a defensive end all solid kids and uh, you know, Alan Rodriguez, he had all conference honors last year at corner, he's back. So there's, there's a lot of experience on defense and I think those guys this year are starting to click and at least with our, our practices that we've had, they have been clicking. Any big hitters? Oh, uh, you know, there's, there's always those guys that they, they're eager to get at and they're, they're right now they're fired up for that first game and they want to hit. Let's move on to the offense a little bit. You said you have uh, nine guys returning on offense. Uh, talk a little bit about the skill positions first. Sure, our entire backfield's back. Uh, Jake Cans, our quarterback from last season, he returns. Um, so this will be his second year at the, the quarterback spot and, and he's getting better every day and, and last year was a great learning experience for him. Uh, brings a lot of experience there. Uh, Alan Rodriguez, our, our starting tailback, fast he's kid. He's a Kohler kid, right? He's a Kohler kid and he's fast. He's, he's got a 4 6 40 and, and, and he's, he's shifty. Uh, uh, 250 pound uh, fullback, 
uh, Zach Webster, also our middle linebacker, he's our fullback, and I rotate Michael Krieger in there too. Uh, so those guys, we, and there's times we may go a heavy set with, with two fullbacks in there. So, so yeah, it's a low. Sure, yardage bring in Krieger. Well, sure, to, sure, to yeah. yeah. We'll get the ball moving. Uh, the offensive line, I, I got four returning starting offensive linemen. So, so can we call Webster hey. or Refrigerator Perry? Hey, go right or ahead. Krieger, I mean. <laughs> Krieger, all those good, both those guys, the big kids, uh, they're solid. They're good athletes. It seems like whenever we go out and watch you guys play, somebody on your side is returning a kickoff back for a touchdown. So special teams obviously have been fairly successful, I would think, over the course of your tenure. Well, yeah. In fact, the last two years, uh, uh, we've had at least one touchdown taken back for special teams each year. Uh, so we do have, we've got some speed. Uh, it's just whether or not we get the holes open for those guys and, and everybody does, does their assignment, and then, then we're good. Now, that was maybe a little bit of, over a week ago, I was out at Kohler, the shops at Kohler, actually, and uh, I noticed the field ripped up pretty much. Uh, no bleachers were set up. Right. Uh, what is your situation for a field this year? Uh, I just got word today uh, that we'll have lights for our first game. Uh, we're probably not going to have the bleachers set for the first game, but our, most likely our next home game. So we're getting a brand new bleachers, brand new nice press box over there. They're really making the facilities. Uh, uh, so we're going to be uh, put up in style. Oh, it'll, <laughs> you guys will be enjoying yourselves up there, this new one, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the conference. Last year, uh, I'm not saying they surprised everybody, but I think they did surprise a lot of people in how far they went in the tournament, and that's Cedar Grove, Belgium. Uh, how do you see the, sh the, the league, Central Lakeshore, shaking out this year, and, and how do you see Lutheran football in there? Right. I, Cedar Grove is going to be a good team. Oostburg is always a good team. They have great, great programs going on. Howard's Grove is, is well coached. Um, uh, Random Lake is well coached. All those schools have, have excellent coaches and, and excellent athletes. Uh, I see them being maybe the top. I, I see us uh, competing for that uh, one of those playoff spots this year, and I can honestly say that that is our goal, and it's a very realistic goal for us. Now, we have you twice this year. We catch you about the middle of the season against Cedar Grove, Belgium, and we know that's going to be a tough game, and you had mentioned before we came on that you're hoping to be 4-0 uh, at that point. Uh, talk a little bit about the games leading up to uh, the Cedar Grove, Belgium. Yeah, you know, we have uh, Hope School uh, week one who uh, has, has really come on to start be, being a better program, and, and uh, you know, they're no slouch. They're, they're good, good, good talent on that team and, and should be a good game for us. Uh, Fall River uh, week two, I don't know much about them. Uh, this will be the first time we played them. Uh, but I think two non-conference games that are, are really good for our program to get us set. Uh, going into conference play, I really like opening up against Random Lake week one. I think that, that'll be a good test for us. And, uh, I, you know, if we get a victory out of that game, they'll, they'll set the tone for our conference play. Uh, and then Elkhart Lake would be our, our week four game who, uh, um, you know, again, they, they've had some success too. So I, I, like, I like the way our conference plays out. I like our schedule. Last game of the year, I believe it's the last game, is uh, Stockbridge, and we get to see you play them. Now, uh, over the years, you've had pretty good success against them. Uh, I would, I would uh, think you'd, you're suspecting that's going to be the case again this year. Yeah, you know, I, I know last year their, their numbers were, were low. Uh, this year I'm probably, they're probably low too, and I know how tough that can be. So, uh, yeah, I, I, again, I'd like to see success against every conference school. So I'm not, uh, but I won't count them out. All right, Matt, thanks a lot for coming in. Really appreciate it. When we come back, Ed Thompson, first-year head coach for Sheboygan North will be in, and we'll be talking North football. Joining me is first-year head coach uh, Ed Thompson. Ed, uh, first of all, congratulations on being named the head coach at North. Uh, tell me a little bit about your coaching philosophy since uh, you are brand new, not brand new to the coaching game, obviously, mm -hmm. but first-year head coach at North. Well, um, anybody who's in coaching doesn't do it for the money. You know, I'm sure you know, you've heard people say that before. You have to enjoy working with kids, and, and that's, that's what's kept me doing it for... I mean, when I played in high school and college, I've been involved in football ever since then. And uh, never as a head coach like this before, though. But um, when you have 
athletes that have trouble um, figuring out a skill or a technique or something like that, and you take them and you work with them, you put them back in and they you know, maybe do it and maybe can't, then you work with them more, work with them more, and eventually they get it and it clicks and you, you see them have success, that's what keeps you in coaching. That's what keeps you wanting to come back year after year. And then all the camaraderie, you know, they always say uh, it's not the wins and losses, it's the journey of a season, and, and that's true. And for this group of kids we have, this journey seems like it started back at Christmas time because right around there, a big nucleus of our team got in the weight room and got going and um, attitudes started changing and they've been doing a real good job ever since. One thing I would think that would help you in terms of taking over the head job is that you have been coaching at North. You've uh, got some experience with these kids, so they know you, yeah. you know them. Yeah. Yeah, I have them in weight training class or, you know, before I even taught that, I had them in the regular gym classes. And, and you're right, I've been assistant coach there for ever since I've been it for 15 years. And so you know them as they come up and you get to learn their, their abilities, their skill levels and stuff, and it makes it kind of easy. Let's uh, turn the page a little bit and talk about maybe what's not so enjoyable about coaching. You know, what are some of the things that uh, make it difficult? Well, I've worked with other head coaches for years, and I know all the stuff they have to do, scheduling and the equipment and the you know, booster club stuff and this and that. But now that I've had to do it this last summer, I think uh, there was maybe one day this summer where I didn't have to come into school to get something done. It's like every day there was something. And I mean, usually it was just the, our lifting and our plyometrics and stuff. I wanted to be there. But uh, almost every day there's something that you have to order or you know, get this printed up or that, and there's so much of that busy work stuff, it's like, you don't or hardly the TV have time guy to coach. Calling. <laughs> yeah, TV guy <laughs> wanting an interview, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the team. Now, uh, in talking before we went on, you'd mentioned you were the in charge of the offense for the last couple of years, and uh, so obviously probably things won't change too much this year. I, I don't know that for sure, but talk a little bit about offense and uh, how you see that shaking out for your ball club. Well, I haven't really been in charge of the offense. Carl Nienice is the one that has all the knowledge. He's the one who is, is the main uh, push behind what we do, and I help him out as much as I can. But um, we're still going to run the wing tee. It's just that we don't run it the old traditional way. We found out that we can't just go up <clears throat> and run straight wing tee plays, and we've kind of adapted the offense to the personnel. The, the wing tee, if you run it traditional, is more of a power type yeah, offense. Yeah. And, and so we've had to spread things out. So we, we, we get people in motion and we spread it out so that the defense can't you know, have so many people in the box. And um, the last couple of years, it started to work a little bit better. More now, one of the things that I would think would really help your offense is the fact that you have a junior quarterback coming back. Mm -hmm. Derek Van Calligan is going to be a senior this year. Uh, talk a little bit about him and his skills, and I would think the way you're setting up the offense really uh, would help him. Uh, Derek and Jake Stengel both uh, did a great job for us last year, and both of them have improved vastly since last year. Um, Derek went to Dan Yudis' quarterback camp and had good reviews um, that he was one of the better quarterbacks there. Jake's worked hard you know, all year in the weight room and when we're doing plyos and everything. And he's, he's gone to many camps too, uh, you know, Badger camps and other colleges where they, you know, they run you through the, through the grind and, you know, see what abilities you have and stuff. And they, they've both worked hard. Um, you know, things now are going very well. They work well together along with a couple other juniors that we have that are, are doing a good job and, you know, with, you know, some of the other seniors that are on the offense too. You have a couple of kids coming back, Reed Conter and Kevin Rivera in the backfield. Talk a little bit about uh, your depth on offense in terms of skill players, and uh, let's move then to the offensive line. <clears throat> well, uh, Reed played last year, and Kevon did also. He played last year. Um, not <laughs> Thank a, you for helping yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want him to get mad when he heard that. <laughs> but uh, Kevon did. Um, he, didn't, he wasn't an every play guy, but he played quite a bit, and he's one of those guys where we can put in at almost any one of the positions. As a matter of fact, we aren't real deep, and so our backs, almost every one of them could get put in any one of the three positions, and, and if somebody goes down, and, we, and they'd be able to fill in. Well, as we look at the offense, over the years, North always seems to be there. Uh, what seems to hold the team back has been the defense, and mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, at times they've really struggled. What, what are we going to do this year to try and shore up the defensive side of the ball? Well, <clears throat> the beginning of the year, <clears throat> we have two main goals. One of them is to be able to run the ball on offense, and the other one is to tackle better. And we, we haven't just said, oh, this is going to be our goal and you know, expect it to happen. We work on it every day at practice. We have a session where the whole team works on blocking, and we have a session where the whole team works on tackling. And uh, you know, it's hard to tell. It won't, you know, it's going to take a while, but you can tell already that things are starting to change a little bit. And uh, you know, I, I don't really agree that the defense hasn't done well because Coach Tegel has had them exactly where they should be for the last couple of years. Yeah, I got to be careful what I see yeah. because Kevin and I play basketball. Yeah. He might just put me up against the yeah. wall for he, uh, he, there can be some games where he can call out what the next play is. He can say, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And our kids will be there, but they can't make the tackle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is the weight room. And, you know, we stressed that last spring, and kids have responded, and they've been in the weight room. This is, you know, program-wide. Uh, the incoming freshmen and the JVs and everyone, we had, we had large numbers all summer long, which is a positive thing for the program. And uh, they've done a good job, and hope, we're hoping it'll translate into now when he has them where they belong and they can make the tackles better. Let's talk a little bit about the conference. We've got about a minute left. Uh, how do you see the conference shaking out this year, and where do you see North fitting in? Well, I see the, the schools that have systems and programs that are traditionally year after year competitive in the conference, I don't see that changing much. You, you know Bayport will be up there, you know Notre Dame and Ashwaubenon and Manitowoc, those schools. Pulaski really surprised a lot of people yeah. making a run in the yeah. tournament. Yeah, Pulaski too last year, yeah. I think that they're going to be to the top of the conference. I think our kids have made huge strides and I think you know, we could end up anywhere in the conference. Uh, you know, right now with their attitudes and the and how hard they're working and the way things are going, we should do well. But it's you know, it's all going to come down to, you know, them focusing and not making mistakes, and we should do well. Ed, thanks a lot for stopping in. Great interview, and uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, and we'll be seeing you against Manitowoc. When we come back, Chris Wright will be talking to uh, Chris Hine from South. I know they never make me play with these guys, but why do they make me train like them? Training hard is important, and for professional athletes, it's their job. But kids aren't professionals and shouldn't train at that level. Keep kids safe on the playing field and out of the operating room. Become an advocate for sports safety. Visit StopSportsInjuries.org. We're back here with uh, Coach Hine from Sheboygan South. Coach, you've been practicing for a week now. How's it been going? It's been good. I mean, we survived last week, I think, was the biggest thing with the heat and humidity. Uh, our kids haven't had that in a while. I mean, last summer was so mild, I think all of us realized the air conditioning's been full, full go all summer. Um, so it went well. I mean, the kids' spirit and attitude was great for the weather and humidity, you know, the heat and humidity we had to deal with. Well, I know you mentioned the summer a little bit. Uh, some things people just think about, everything takes place during the school year and it's always on Friday nights, but you do a lot during the summer too. Would yeah. you like to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, you know, in this day and age, all high school programs, it's, you know, the off seasons become critical because if you're not doing anything, somebody else is and or everybody else is in your conference. So we lift four days a week in the summer and run four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And uh, for those eight weeks we had this summer, I mean, it's absolutely critical that the kids are in there getting stronger, you know, not only so they're competitive on the field, but for safety reasons too. Do you see uh, big changes over the summer and from year to year with your summer programs? Yeah, I'm, um, you do. I mean, you see big changes in the kids, hopefully is what you want to see the biggest change in. You know, in that eight week period, you're really looking for them to progress, you know, uh, become stronger, become quicker, uh, become faster, uh, be conditioned. So when two days do come around like last week, that they're prepared for it and they're not just jumping into it, you know, cold. Now, the last two seasons, I think one of the biggest thing that's really hit you is the injury bug. It's just two years in a row and, you know, there's so many kids injured, you know, hopefully this conditioning stuff will help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at the end of last season, I sat down with our trainer, who's excellent, Maggie Bauer. She's worked with some of the best programs in the state. 
um, Green Bay, Notre Dame, Appleton North, uh, you know, the arena team up in Green Bay. And I just said, you know, what are we doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And uh, it would, she said, it's just been bad luck. You know, we've just run in the last two years. We've run into really bad luck and injuries that just really don't seem to be avoided that kids are just, you know, hit from behind as they're running down the field. I mean, dove into their knees. We've had broken ankles in warmups last year. I mean, we're running through plays and our starting tight end gets his ankle rolled up on and breaks it in pre two minutes before kickoff against Manti. I mean, it's just things like this that, you know, it just seems like it's been a run of bad luck. Obviously, we're trying to um, deal with it in our off-season conditioning and, and workout program and trying to do lifts that are going to hopefully prevent that. But, you know, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and hit at the wrong angle, you know, there's really nothing that can be done. And so hopefully we'll get a, catch some luck this year with injuries. Now with that, do you have good numbers? Uh, they're a little down. I mean, our last two freshman classes have been small. So we, kind of, we saw it coming. Uh, two years ago, we had 24 kids in our freshman class. Last year, we had 17. I mean, so our numbers are down. And, you know, everybody, we all know, we were aware of it. We knew it was going to be here. Um, that makes it even more critical that we stay healthy this year. You know, uh, it's, but it's going to be a challenge. In a nine-week season in our league, it's a physical, it's a good league. So we'll see how it goes. Now let's talk a little bit of positive. I think you got a great one-two punch there in Ethan Berlin and Riley Tudis. Yeah, yeah we definitely love our athletes. Um, you know, Riley was led the league last year in receiving yards, led the league in receiving touchdowns. Uh, Ethan, because of an injury, uh, Jake Rissey was having a great year in week five. He got hurt against DePierre. Mm -hmm. Ethan came in. Uh, I played both ways for us last year, it was all conference at corner. And as a playmaker on offense, we're really excited about those two. We're excited about some of our other athletes. Josh Grinke, we're excited about, who's a great baseball player on the south side of town, is playing football this year, and he's just got great speed. That's um, an understatement. <laughs> yeah, he's got unbelievable speed. Uh, Thomas Murray from the JV team, Brady Callahan back at tight end. I mean, we just feel really good about our skilled kids and, and really good about the athletes that, that we're going to have on the field this year. Now let's talk about something you're familiar with then on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Defensively, we're very excited. We have, uh, obviously, you know, the one tough part is Coach Edis, as everybody read in the paper last Sunday, has moved to Homestead with his son. He thought it was best for his son's future. And, you know, and I have no problem at all with the decision he made, but he was our D coordinator last year. Um, we're going back to the things that we did in the past. We're going back to the defenses that we ran when we won the conference. And we were first in our league two years in a row and third in our league the year after. Getting kind of back to that. The kids are, while they're disappointed that Coach Edis isn't with us, they're excited to get back to some of the things that we did at South and were successful with in the past. Uh, the good news is, you know, we have nine kids that started three games or more on defense for us back. We haven't had that in a long time. So, I mean, we should be a confident and a strong defense this year. Uh, and do you have some coaches to replace Coach Edis? I mean, he, you don't replace Hall of Fame coaches. <laughs> <laughs> but. <That's true. laughs> Uh, but we definitely have um, some coaches that have been here a long time, been at South Coach Berlin's, been at South much longer than I've been there. Coach Rank's been there with as long as I've been there. We have Coach Roberson, a new coach, played at Lakeland, coached at Lakeland on the defensive side. That is great knowledge of defense that we're really excited about. So, yeah, everybody's just got to step it up a little bit. And I think uh, Coach Tudis, you know, Coach Goodman, we're all going to step it up on, on our side of the ball. Uh Anybody on the special teams looking sharp for you? Yeah, we love our kicking game. Jake Plant was a sophomore last year, kicked for us. Thomas Murray punted as a, jun as a sophomore last year, so both our kickers are juniors. Uh, yeah, we're really excited. We don't want to wear our punter out, that's for sure, this year. I mean, that's never good, but when we do have to punt, we think we got one of the best ones in the conference. When we line up to kick a field goal, we know Jake feels very confident. So, yeah, we're ex excited about our, our special teams. We are just under a minute here. Coach, uh, anything else to look forward to for the, the Red Wings this year? Uh, I just hope, you know, the fans come out. I think we're going to have an exciting team. I, I tell the kids that all the time. I and mean, we, We've got athletes. We've got speed. We've got to utilize it. We've got to play fast. Um, we've got a defense that I think is going to look familiar to fans that were here five years ago. And hopefully we're going to see defense flying around, making plays like, like we have in the past. And, so I'm excited. Uh, I hope the fans are excited. I hope, you know, they're still going to come out. We had a tough season last year. There's no doubt about that. But 
that's, this is a new team, it's a new season, and uh, we're going to give it the best we can. And we always look forward to that concession stand, too. <laughs> Thanks so much, Coach, for coming right. in. And uh, when we return, Mike and I will finish up the show. Dad? Mom? Talk to me about sex. Tell me to wait. Tell me what you want. I can handle it. Can you? Tell your kids you want them to wait till they're married to have sex. They'll have a better chance at success. Come on, Dad. Speak up, Mom. You can do it. Hey, Chris, great job with uh, Chris Hine. We want to thank all the coaches for coming in. Without their help, of course, this uh, show wouldn't be possible. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about Ed Thompson because when he was leaving today, he, had, he felt bad that he wasn't able to uh, mention the names of some of the linemen on offense and defense. We ran short of time, and uh, uh, so he did feel some concern about that, and uh, sometimes those things happen. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, our schedule this year. We open up with uh, Manitowoc at North, and uh, we end up with uh, the North-South game. But uh, what are some of the key games you see on, on our schedule? Well, I'm really excited to see Sheboygan, Lutheran, Kohler, uh, Christian play again. I mean, they struggled so much last year, and Coach Savada seems very excited about his squad. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him. We have them twice this year. And obviously opening day in a couple weeks on September 10th, again, you know, our Mantuak North game. And as usual, the North-South game, uh, we're going to finish up with that. So that's a big highlight. And we missed Lakeland last year, so I'm excited to get out there as well. Yeah, we got Lakeland at the end of the schedule. They're going to play uh, Benedictine. And uh, I think I read in the paper not too long ago, they are picked for second in their conference. So uh, hopefully that'll be a good game. Uh, last year we did our predicting, and uh, we're going to go through that right now. And I think I... Uh, Two years in a row, Coach. All right. I think you did that. Kick some butt, that's nah. what we're talking about. Anyway, last year I picked Bayport, and they did win conference at 7-1. and one. You had Notre Dame, a, a really good pick, and uh, they were one game out of the mix at 6-2. and two. Uh, Green Bay Southwest, uh, along with... Uh, uh, Manitowoc all finished at six and two, and the conference seemed pretty top heavy last yes, year. Yes, it did. And this year, it seems like a lot of the big stars from last year graduate: Ashwaubenon, Notre Dame, uh, Bayport. All these schools lost a lot of big stud players from their team, so it's going to be really wide open this and year. And we didn't even mention the surprise team of the tournament, and that was Pulaski, because they uh, went three games deep into the tournament. And uh, in our uh, preseason predictions that we got off the internet, they're picked to take first this year. Yeah. But how do you see North and South fitting in? I think North and South are going to struggle a little bit again. Uh, they're going to have to catch some breaks. And obviously, I think on the advantage, I think, is that their division is a little weaker than the other division. So if they can, you know, make up some, you know, win some games in their, in their league, which doesn't seem as strong as the Eshwabanons and the Bayports and those who have to pound on each other. Uh, hopefully they'll, they'll get some wins. Who do you see taking conference? I'm going to go with Notre Dame. I know they lost their big back this year, yeah. but their tradition, and they got a great field. If you've never been up there, you should go up and see that field. Yeah, and I'm going to pick Pulaski, so we're going to have to write that down. Uh, we're running short of time. Last year I had Plymouth in the uh, eastern Wisconsin. You had Kewaskum. Uh, Kewaskum finished in second, 6-1. and one. Plymouth was 7-0. and oh. Who do you see winning that? I'm going to take Plymouth. Okay, I'll go with Plymouth, too, just to make sure I win next year. <laughs> <laughs> In the Central Lakeshore, uh, we each picked uh, Howard's Grove, and they finished with only a 4-3 and three record. Cedar Grove, I don't want to say they came out of nowhere, but, boy, they were tough last year making it uh, into the playoffs and with a 7-0 and record and then moving along very far. Yeah, two years ago they got to the state finals. Last year they, they won it again. I'm going to go with Duisburg. Okay, and I'm going to go with Cedar Grove again. Uh, with that, we're going to have Lakeland at the end of the year against Benedictine. Uh, we want to thank the coaches again for coming in. Chris, uh, great job, and thanks a lot for helping, and we're looking forward to doing the season, and we want to thank you for watching. And uh, with that, we'll see you down the road, everybody. Mm -hmm.